Kristen Murphy. Don Clement. Deb is our new, no, you're not our new member. <laughs> <laughs> I would be trying. I tried. <laughs> Um, seeing Deb is our only public member here, well, why don't we go right into um, our first item, the okay. Oakland's uh, orienteering event. You have, we have an application in the packet for, for your event, June 4th, 2023. Do you want to just briefly sure. describe it? I know you've been sure. before us before. Yeah, yeah, it's been four and a half years. How's it? Wow. Put on event. Um, and I did get all the insurance. I didn't bring copies of that, but you have insurance. We're covered by the U.S. Orienteering Federation. And so I have maps of our, well, have copies of our map if you're interested, if people are interested in where this, so you don't need to, I don't know if you care. Or I just show, we're gonna yeah, start with yeah, our, okay. Um, so these, so if you see Northeast Lantern there, that's, I have permission to do the start there. And um, so the, what you see is just the areas that we're going to use and what I do is, oh, and I'm also gonna hand out, this is what the details are of the event and I represent Up North Orienteers. This is a, a non-profit group that's been I've been part of for 30 years, more than 30 years. Yes, yes, more than 30 years doing orienteering, teaching it, teaching in schools, doing all that fun stuff. And so this event is, uh, so what happens is, I don't know if you're familiar with orienteering events, you know how they work. Yay. Yeah. I am not. Oh, so. great, 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 great. That's what I want to hear. So for what orienteering is, it uses very detailed maps that we make using LiDAR data, and I'm updating this one with the newest LiDAR data. Um, and um, everything that's out in the woods is on the map. And so orienteering is a sport, a fun game, a learning thing, opportunity for kids and families. So they would go, they would um, come to the Northeast Lantern where I'm set up, and they, if you're a member, they can go for free, but they didn't. This is, of course, the wrong scale. I printed out, say, paper, but it's printed out the correct scale, and we have a beginning level with instruction. And what they do once they have instructions, the beginners, they get their map and they try to find circles that are not on this map. I thought it was blank, but I could have put a whole bunch of circles I'm gonna show you, but circles to lead them around so that they learn to use a map in a very friendly way, because the, if they are a beginner, you're not going, I'm not gonna do anything confusing for you. You're going to go to um, controls. These are flags, so orange and white flags that I time place that morning and take them up when we're done. And that's really all that's out in the woods is these flags, they're big orienteering controls. And when they get them to them, there's a little box, electronic box, and they have a finger stick that they acquired at the start and they put it in the box and it goes beep, then it records which one they went to and at what time. It's also recorded at the control. So it's not a race, but we know where they are, when, and how long it takes for them to get around. And then the next level up um, is also on trail, but you might be following other linear features like stone walls or big open spaces, fields, uh, streams, things that are still linear but don't take you off the trail, off, off of things that aren't easy to guide. And then the level after that is just, it keeps getting incrementally a little harder and the control and the um, length of the courses goes to about one, uh, 1.5 kilometers all the way to six kilometers. So people that are very advanced are going up into this area in the north part to find their controls. And I usually hang between 25 and 30 um, for just this type of event. And then they just come back and they use their little dibbler to punch the last thing that says when they finish so we know who's in the woods when and we know where everybody is. And, um, Basically, that's what I'm hearing. You know, she's been very fun. I've represented the U.S. for many, many years, internationally, long distance, and um, that's where it started for me. But now I continue just to show others, and they get hooked. So, yeah, the start window that I have on there, I think I did a 10 to 12 start window. That's the time when anyone can come and go out whenever they want in that window. They must be out of the woods by three, so we can. Uh, my volunteers can go out and pick up all of the controls. Um, we do it rain or shine. Uh, mostly our, the numbers of people that will come if it's raining will drop, but there are some people that know about orienteering, and orienteering in the rain is actually part of the adventure. So some will still show up for that. 
I have insurance uh, from the U.S. Sanitary Federation that names the town of Exeter as well as um, Northeast Lantern, Chip, um, Heal, Skip, Skip. And, and what's the dad? Oh, that's the dad. And then the son does a lot of the interface now and they have a real estate company, but they are also named in it. Sometimes I use that, um, is that, is that called Don's Trail? The one that goes on Don's Trail? I mean, my bowels are getting wrong. Um, but I'm not going to use that area at all. And so the map truly needs to be updated as of the done since 2018. As you can see, these yellow marks on the south along the pipeline there, but, uh, the yellow are field and open, but it's, I've been out there, it's all going oh, in. Yeah. From so, the timber harvest. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, I have to remap that. I see there's new mountain bike cut across. There's two other things. Uh, it has to be very accurate, otherwise it's just, it's hard for people. You can't have things out in the woods that aren't on the map. I just wouldn't use that area if something, something changed so much. Well, I don't take them up into where these condo areas are, on the, just south of 101, um, along, um, along, what's the name of the road there? The Epping. Yes, I think. Oh, 27, oh. I was thinking about it. Yeah, I think so. I don't use that area at all. Uh, it's just too different out there now. Mm -hmm. um, but this map I made with Tony Federer back in like 1985 or 19, remember when we did that? That was mm -hmm. fun to do. Is that name we can about Tony? Yeah, Tony Federer. You still see him regularly? Okay. So did you you digitize some of this, the, the rocks? There's yes, it's all done. Uh, LiDAR data, well, back then, we would fly planes that would just do a yeah side scanning sonar kind of thing. No, it was well, it was it was it was images that were taken at different depths, so that you yeah. had yeah, that's that what you mean. And then send them to Scotland, and we'd come get a drawing back, and then uh -huh. you take the drawing into the forest, and you have to walk every single bit of it because all those little dots are boulders. Yeah. And then there's wet areas, and there's green is vegetation, which I definitely have to change because a lot of this dark green is now not dark green it's just stuff has grown up so a lot of that has changed like i saw it by the parking lot i think you were just talking about it when we just somebody cut a tree or something that's all not dark green anymore by the tunnel by the railroad uh, track it's not dark green anymore so vegetation has a change and then just i've been running the trails just seeing where there are new there's new stuff around where northeast lantern is too that's a little different than the last time I went. So yes, everything is done. Uh, so okay, so now we just download the lidar data, and which can give you vegetation height and gives you so much that you can just go out and it's easy. You can actually see the boulders on lidar. You know, you can see everything. So uh, yep, that's how we do it. It just needs to be updated. What else am I supposed to say? Yeah, I, I, I think you covered it. Yeah, just questions. One, one suggestion. Um, yes. I don't know if you use Strava or anything like that. No. But this is like the heat map yep. for the area. And yep. you can see like which trails are currently being used. Yes. And, and I don't know if that would be on the key or not. But, um, um, no, I did notice that a lot over uh, north of 101 in there, this little um, really gnarly part with those wetlands. Are now, it was pretty high water mass loss out there. Um, those trails aren't used very much, you know, but... Uh, well, some of them we've actually closed down. I, and stuff. But I like, there's an example south the of the gas line. You can see, like, here's a trail that oh, really doesn't yeah, get south used. Oh, yeah, south of the gas line, yeah. And anymore, yeah. you know, there's nobody on it, and yeah. then there's one over here that's new that is. Yeah, so I can get on Strava to see that, but I have to really visually see it. But if I, if there is a sign that says don't use this trail, I take it off my map. Great. But if there's a uh, trail that isn't used a lot and I can tell, I still have to put it on because somebody will cross it and it will just cause confusion if there's a trail that's not on the map. Okay. Not that this is a big competitive thing. If it, I mean, there is there are huge national ranking events coming up, not here, um, <coughs> but they, you can't have any mistakes on that. So we just go out and just man them walk manually, just walk through them all. Um, but any other suggestions? Awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a non-profit thing. There's thousands of us across the country. It's a very obscure little sport, but it's really fun and teaches kids a lot. But everything, being in the woods. And I've never noticed the stone walls on here before. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe when you update it, would you mind sending us a copy of the map, or is it a proprietary it map? It is thing? proprietary, but I can send you one 
it can't be like, I can't say, I can't say the file, but I can send you a map, send you a map. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just, yeah. I think it's a neat, oh, it's, uh, it's it has some fabulous. neat features that, it ha you that saw it? even though our, we have some good, like, trail forks or yeah, yeah. there's, with the two foot wide ours still, but you have some neat features well, on there that aren't on other, other maps. Well, what's great about orienteering, um, you know, orienteering in this country or using maps comes, came from the military to the Boy Scouts to the teachers, and it really focuses on the compass. And in Sweden, where this sport started, where there's big competitions, I mean, like 35,000 people in one day I mean it's the national sport over there and I've been there and those is that you don't really use a compass um, you use features to so that you understand where you are you turn the map so that it's real but you don't unless you have nothing to look at then the compass all you really care about is where magnetic north is to get the map to orient yeah, right. after that you don't need your compass because you're looking these these are three probably three foot contours there one, no no they must be bigger than that on this map does it say it's oh three meters it's three meter there. Three meter. So you're, every subtle re-entrant and tiny little spur and little divot and into the ground is mapped as well as above ground. And the stone stones have to be at least one meter to be on the map. And then uh, we didn't use a lot of triangles. You see a triangle, there's a boulder cluster. But we have Pawtuckaway, College Woods, um, just there's probably two dozen maps in New Hampshire. Up north, Orienteers is just New Hampshire. Um, but all states have an orienteering club and dozens of maps. Uh -huh. And they're, they're made by mostly volunteers. Well, we sometimes, not so much now, but we would get people from Eastern Europe to come because they have just well, they want to map, and they just will map for 16 hours a day in the summer. They just, just, just put them out in the woods and map. So, but now we're doing it more just within clubs and stuff. You can see the stony ground. You can see just subtle everything, subtle features. So you navigate by really interpreting the land around you constantly, constantly, constantly. So I hope you come. Very cool. Yeah. Can we help with maybe publicity or is there? Yeah, I saw that you have the, on the website, you do have a list on your calendar. I would love it to get on the calendar. Yeah, if you want to send me the flyer yeah. or. Um, maybe maybe okay. even reaching out to the school or something. Or? Well, I do a lot of that and we do have a meetup group that sometimes comes to orienteering and someone on the club um, puts it there, puts it in Portsmouth. Um, one of the stuff they do get it around but that's if I can think of something beyond what we do that would be great it's a it's a great activity for everybody and um, so mm -hmm. oh, I know uh, somebody's gonna ask me about dogs dogs on leash or no dogs someone Are you ask oh yeah yeah, yeah. Asking what on, leash, on, on leash yeah. Oh, no, yeah. okay because people will technically ask the people. ordinance says on leash or under owner control, control yeah. mm -hmm. I'm the I'm a mean dog lady for many years living here in town. I had a reputation. I'd go somewhere and I go, I've seen you in the woods. You're the dog lady because... We've had bad experiences. I've had some bad experiences with dogs. Yeah. So I'm it's best to stop on leash. Mm -hmm. It is best to stop on leash. Any other right. questions? Can I recommend it to... Yeah. Motion. Right. So, I'll, I'll motion that we review this application and approve of the use agreement as proposed. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? None. Okay. The motion passes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, you are so approved. Much. Yes. So I will. Um, Thanks for good weather. I will um, make sure to send you the updated map or send them so you can have them. Um, and the flyer. And the flyer with information to put on that. And um, what else am I supposed to do? That's it. I think That's you're good correct. to go. You said you gave the insurance information. Yep. It's certificate to me. So thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to see thank you. You. you too. See you. So see thanks you. for doing that. Here. Hi. Yeah. Um, it reminds me, have we heard if the trail race is happening? It's usually later in June. We haven't heard yes. from Sarah or Rye. We did. It, oh, I did. They're coming next to Sarah. Time. They're going to come. Didn't, I didn't hear anything from Sarah. Yep. So I don't know if she's still doing stuff with the trail. I think it's usually later, so date wise, we'll <coughs> coordinate that. But, so it'll come next month, perfect. Pretty sure it was next month. Yes, it's definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um.
Um, all right, so we don't have any other formal applications, but we have a bunch of things we missed last month. There's a lot to talk about. Um, so do, let's, let's go down the line here with the pollinator pathway kit. Yeah, so um, Ginny and I are Exeter's pollinator pathways of New Hampshire representative. Um, we've been working with Evie Nathan and Marty Bean. We applied for a grant to be used um, in the entire region of Pollinator Pathways New Hampshire to offer seed kits to our member communities and Exeter being one, that means that we have access to five seed kits to convert a six foot by nine foot um, lawn area or non-native plant area to native pollinator patch. Um, the packet contains the advertising material that we can customize to advertise the activity plus an application. Um, so assuming you're interested in moving forward with the program, um, oh, and in addition, because Exeter has a seed library, we also get a restock of our seed library. So we to restock the seed library. So and that's the, the, oh, sorry. A six by nine area? Yep. Do we have the designated where that is? Is that, does that have to be something specific about that area? Or? So, yeah, it needs to be um, predominantly sunny because it's a sunny seed mix, uh, mostly sunny seed mix. Predominantly sunny, we have um, planting or site prep instructions, so you need to be able to follow so those and make a commitment to, one, you need to own the land. The application kind of steps Maintain through the, water and all that stuff. the requirements. But um, as long as you're committed to do that, provide a pre-photo, an after-seeding photo, and then a photo app once, you know, once there's growth, then um, those five seed kits are available to go out. So it's really up to um, Pollinator Pathways New Hampshire is leaving it up to individual commissions how you want to distribute the seed kits. Some towns are saying we want one for a demonstration garden and we'll you know, raffle off the rest. It could be first come, first serve. It's really up to you. My thought was a raffle for Exeter just because it's easiest. And then you could do the drawing at your next meeting, which is May. Site for us on our own. Um, you can do whatever I'm you saying, want. No, you you would just go for a straight raffle five. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's up to you. Um, I'm not sure where we would do it. I think that we could. I, there are yeah, lots of places sure. in town that I'd love to yeah. want have, places. like the island at Holland Way, but um, something that's visible. Yeah, so uh, it's really up to you how you want to, um, how you want to, dis one, if you want to participate, and two, yeah. how you want to distribute it. Yes? What's a seed library? Sorry. So a seed library is basically supply, seed supplies at the library <clears throat> that you can go and you check out, you know, an envelope of, you know, peas or insert whatever. Um, in this case, it would be some sort of native plant or native seed mix. And then you can take a portion home and that's yours and you leave the rest there for others to, to borrow and use. I know borrow is kind of a, not the right term, but it's basically a nice place to go and, um, and get some seeds. Love for, 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 for heirloom seeds too. Yeah, and you can, well, you know, leave seed there as well. Uh, a few years ago with Ginny, maybe it was just last year, um, we did the seed ball, the uh, milkweed seed ball kits there. Mm. Um, they did a mini seed library in the children's room and that like, she was restocking constantly. That just was wildly popular. So um, yeah. So but it's the there, the seed library, and it's up by the checkout. It is, Ginny and I are meeting tomorrow with them to talk about like how, you know, how, how do we need to, because it's right now it's it's part Exeter Area Garden Club, okay. um, and so there's some different components. So we don't want to, you know, we want to be collaborative and be sure we're not taking away from that. But well, I think one we should participate, and then we can figure out how we're going to distribute. I mean, my my you know my vote would be to participate in this. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you know, I'm sorry, the parkway, it's supposed to be a good spot on the parkway to do a demo garden. And that's a visible area. It is. 
and we have to talk to the trustees, I'm sure, but because I know years and years ago, maybe you were involved. Okay. Pete Richards and I, we planted an awful lot of plantings around Norris Brook. Yes. In that area. Some took. True. Many didn't. Many, many didn't, but. Hmm. I like that idea. It's kind of like, you know, there was that patch on 101, I guess there still is, where they stopped mowing in the median and mm -hmm. became wildflowers. And, and we seeded. On Holland Way, is that where you are? No, 101. On 101, oh, the state DOT decided that it could. But it did, it was like an attraction here. It it's almost like a, too much of a distraction uh, to, everyone's looking at the flowers as they drive by, but. Um, it would be nice in the parkway, I think, too. Well, the demo area, I mean, I'm yeah. just saying, because it's visible, and you want people to see it, and get enthused and excited it, yeah. about it, and say, I geez, I'd like to plant five flowers in the back of my yard instead of a piece of, piece of lawn, you know? Could we table it till next month if Dave Dave's around? I mean, Dave would be. I guess I would encourage you to hope, reserve one kit for a demonstration project and then announce now for the remaining four, just because people are yeah, itching to plant and we want to be sure they properly yeah. prep the site yeah. so that we're not having you know a ton of grass. Okay, and we can, if it never works out with our site, we could always just we announce it. Turn, yeah. it, turn it loose. So do we need a motion for that? Motion to participate in the um, pollinator seed pathway. Pathway. Stepping stone seed. And uh, reserve our place for demonstration plot and uh, reserve our spot for. Four more? Four more. Four more. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh. Motion passes. I kind of did that in my backyard where it was, we had some work done, trees taken down, regraded, and got some wildflower seed last spring, late last spring. Yeah. Some of it came up because I didn't do a good job preparing the ground, but and it, and we had a drought. It didn't rain. Yeah. <laughs> so this seed mix is um, part annuals, part part herbaceous perennials. So you know, it's it, it will take a couple years really before it's a thriving pollinator garden, which is why Swayze kind of gives me pause because that's such a manicured place but yeah i agree but i just thought i, I just i was looking for someplace visible yeah yeah just sit down and think about it and yeah as far as logistics go i think a random drawing next next yeah. month great is it possible to talk to greg and see if the parks and rec have any yeah i'm sure i'm sure we could come up with a site i like uh flows into our next one the mm -hmm. hill white festival what about founders park mm -hmm. well not a lot of room there. This maybe, five, I, I don't know. Five, I think five, nine feet. Six by nine. Six by nine. Yeah, so maybe what we do is bring some, maybe if you want to email your ideas to me and I'll try to vet as many sites as I can with whoever is managing the, that location mm. um, before the next meeting and then we can decide the location that way. That's the right idea. Yeah. So it's, it's visible. visible. Yeah. yeah. It's, in town, yep. visible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was nice to have it at Morris set, but you know, when people are going to see it at Morris, mm -hmm. people who are going out there on occasion. Yeah, I know we did have a, a resident reach out to us for behind town hall. Apparently, there's a section of it's really dirt um, with not much growing there oh, the in between. Oh, the alleyway? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is it not I'll something? I'll have to walk over there. Like, I can't think of where it would be. Yeah. So between the town hall and the... Uh, and all this, yeah. but <laughs> really steep. Yeah. The access to get to the bathroom. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'm vertigo. I mean, even the back edge of... Um, the park downtown that is right by the 
parking lot. Oh, here. yeah, here, mm. parking lot yeah. there oh. on the back oh. side of all the. Um, Who's in the fountain? <laughs> the. Yeah. What are those plants? Those tall plants that I hate. <laughs> I don't know because I don't know one. Arborvitaes. Arborvitaes. Yes, on the back side of the arborvitae, there's you know a pretty decent area. Yeah. It gets a fair amount of sun. Maybe it could be a couple different pockets throughout town. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, whatever works. Yeah, you know, we don't need to. Any of those ideas sound pretty good. All right, should we keep moving? Uh, the Alewife Festival is rapidly approaching. We had a meeting <laughs> yesterday about it. Don was present online. Well, it was all online. We're all, I was online. Um, so thanks to Kristen for getting this off the ground. It's May 13th, Saturday. We decided it's going to be 10 to 1 this year instead of nine to one because it was too long mm -hmm. last year so we're trying to keep it simple keep it fun <laughs> yes keep it easy yeah so the the plan this year is like we're not <laughs> we're not tacking on a bunch of other events we're not doing the kayak tour that really didn't take off we're not doing the film festival the raffle the mascot contest it'll literally just be tables um at founders but to to kind of build some interest in it um the plan is for each table to have a st um, a stamp and people who attend will go around with a postcard and fill up their postcard with their passport stamp from each table. And then that postcard, they can put their contact info in, that postcard will be submitted for a raffle for prizes. And we know now at this point, it's the prize is at least a rain barrel. Public Works said that they would donate a rain barrel and the um, spigot and fixtures needed to make a rain barrel functional. And, the other thing, oh, and a whole life glasses. We had some custom pint glasses that I still have quite oh, a few yeah. left. Um, I'd be willing to donate four of them. And whatever else we want to think of. Is there any way people can get down to the water's edge? No. Park? Yeah, that's what I was. You had like some kind of like reverse periscope thing yeah. where you could kind of look down and you know mirrors or something so actually, we're things. actually working with and i don't i don't know that we can get this pulled off by the ly festival so i kind of hesitate to say it but bob glowacki has had this vision of the area next to string bridge um is a great spot for viewing but to have an underwater camera put there. So we, kind of, we kind of started that. talking about it in more detail. Um, I checked with Fish and Game and I checked with DES. They said no permit is necessary. So that's a nice thing. And so the plan is to just lay a cement block, basically like a paver in the water and attach the camera to it, submerge it, and then have a cable. And uh, what's it called, ethernet cable or whatever, the internet cable connect to, this is the challenging part, connect to the library. He met with Hope today, she was okay with that, but the logistics of actually having conduit and getting to the library is a little challenging. But the cool thing about that would be, one, we would have a website where you could have a you know, daily viewing of what's swimming by. It would be a live the, stream maybe. Right, it would be a live stream on the website. But then you could also have, for events, you could have a viewing station. Um, which would be ideal. So I don't know that we'll be able to pull all of that off um, in time for <clears throat> this LY Festival, but it's definitely a hope for the next one. Um, in lieu of that, what we talked about was maybe every 30 minutes or so, someone could walk a group down to String Bridge and talk about the fish from that viewing area. Uh, but last year, you were there, right? I was. There were thousands of our wives right there and found us back. Yeah. He just looked over right by the uh, the old works, the yeah. old cut trying to come up through those channels. I mean, they were just bubbling up. 
I mean, you don't know what the other one is. They have a mind of their own. They're going to come up, or they're not going to come up, and they're going to come up early. They're going to come up late. They're going to, depending on the tide and water temperature. But the viewing there was fabulous. I thought. Yeah, I thought it was the bottom. I said, oh, you can't see anything. And then I realized right. that what I was oh, yeah. seeing was all fish. Yeah. Now, if he could put a camera there, running the conduit to the library, he wouldn't have to run it across Spring Bridge, Spring Bridge. Yeah, so they I don't, I mean, I don't know, I don't know the, you know, the technical challenges that he has beyond that, but. There was concerns that it not be placed in an area where fish already are constricted. Whereas, so on the south, um, on the downstream side of Spring Bridge, there's kind of a larger pool area. Whereas that area, there was concerns because they'd ha they had to manipulate the, you know, the... Um, well, there's two channels for them to manipulate. Yeah, so... In the rapids. I'd rather do it in a way that we don't need a permit, <laughs> but... All right, I, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think we need a permit there either. We're probably yeah. camera in, but I'm just, I don't know. Yeah. I just think there's a... I've been down there, I've looked at it, I've been there and watched the Alewives, and that's what you're talking about. It's really not a very good place to be with cars going back and forth. It's not very large. Yeah. It's hard to put in more than several people. Yeah. It's, it's unfortunate, but it's, yeah, I just don't think it's yeah. a you good viewing platform. You have to be tall enough to see over the bridge. <laughs> Yeah. We really there's, need there's to be place to there's the there's river. There's you got to get in oh, yeah. to this bank of the river and down there and actually mm -hmm. be right next to the water, I think. But we we do have New Hampshire Fish and Game coming with fish. You know, they'll bring fish for their demonstration. Um, so it's not that I... Yeah. yeah. Something for the committee to think about. But, oh, but to get people engaged, right last year we sent people down, but this, I don't, and we don't know who would be the one. We don't. Whether it be you or someone else right. leading mini tours down to the right. string bridge or somewhere else to try and, so. Yes. So if you're interested in doing that, you want to volunteer. volunteering spot. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, we also haven't decided what we're doing. The Conservation Commission again. We, Trevor and I, last year did these um, models that we got from DES that we can get again. Um, there's a groundwater model in the scape. What is it? The landscape. Viroscape. Viroscape model, which shows water flowing over the landscape, and you you know you spray bottle to make it rain and see runoff and that sort of thing, which is pretty cool. One of the things we talked about, one of these subjects we talked about yesterday, I remember, if I remember correctly, was trying to show the connection between the river and the bay. And, uh, you know, I know preps about to have their annual, not annual, but their five year. Five, six, five year. <laughs> and, and, and the state of the estuaries report. Yeah. Um, is there any way of getting some of that information available so, for him? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kristen emailed me. Unfortunately, oh, okay, no. so the conference, the Prep State of Our Stories conference, takes place on June second. Yeah. Um, we don't plan on having anything printed until the nineteenth, and that's like we're really gunning for it. And usually, they hand them out of the conference. This year was a little bit different because we're like really gunning for very specific people at the conference. We're giving them like if you know a couple of weeks to look at some stuff over. But even then, we yeah. didn't have anything public for for the this. Although I did, you know talk to the team because Exeter's alewife um, data is like really really cool since the dam came out um, so I can give a little tease there and yeah. say everyone read the report everyone at home um, but I so I can talk about that there I can talk about like the migratory fish and I, and I can certainly just talk water quality I mean we can, yeah that's it yeah, I mean because usually the prep report talks about the different indicators yeah you know um, uh, eelgrass oysters water right. quality yeah. I mean it certainly we can talk about water quality at Exeter uh, we can, that's where we can talk about one of the one of the things we measure for water quality which is a big measurement is the DO dissolved oxygen mm -hmm. you know how that contributes to the bay, or you know, cleans the bay, and how water quality helps the bay, and, and that helps the fish come upstream, because now we get good water there, you know. So we can, 
but we don't want to have a, a, a lecture. We want to have some kind of a demonstration, yeah. you know, a table that shows all that, and I don't know how to pull that together. But, all right, some good thoughts there. Yeah, so I think it would be good, and we talked about this on yesterday, Monday, to have, you know, a couple scheduled talks, you know, so we have one from New Hampshire Fish and Game, um, a welcome speech, something about the connection to Great Bay and, um, you know, the teaser for the state of the estuaries. I, I think that would be great, and that to kind of, you know, I feel like when people are walking by and they hear someone talking, they're going to be like, oh, what's going on down there, you know, and so um, so I think that would be a good way to draw folks in, um, and we can have a microphone available, and then from there, people could just kind of disperse to the tables and, and go around. So I think we could do a mix if people are interested. Okay. Yeah, I like the, that concept. I mean the kickoff talk and then, yeah. then it's just open. So we have participation from CONCON now, um, Energy Committee, they'll have the electric vehicle sustainability. I believe they're doing something on plastics and junk mail reduction. Um, am I forgetting? Erlac. Erlac. That's Erlac. And then um, I'm hoping I can pull together a lawn care uh, I was talking to uh, somebody who was in the room committee. Um, the room committee. Our room committee. Yeah, oh, Dick Huber. Yeah. Yeah. Room, yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yes, I should. Maybe he could do something. I mean, I know they just got they just got a hundred thousand dollar planning grant about. Yep. Cool. The town did for the pickpocket dam. Oh yeah, well yeah. There's all this stuff going on in the pickpocket dam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that'd probably be a good. That could be a good opportunity. We did that for the great dam in many, many, many years. We're gonna want to start the conversation. And grants and studies. Definitely and a process. That's definitely a good place for them to you know just start that conversation. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, so I put it on Dick's radar for sure. Um, by the way, I like the idea of the camera. It's kind of cool. It's like the Osprey cam. Right, which I'm so well, jealous like, of. I would love yeah, that, right. too. We used to do that and the ski falls. They used to do a, really? a, a, a camera. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, um, at the dam. That was dam. fantastic. You, yeah. so you walk underneath there and you... Uh, you can look into the fish you, was it, was it, was it, You can look into the fish ladder. It wasn't a camera. You're was looking that? in windows. Windows, so. yeah. Uh, it was so cool. Mass. Do they too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Might go out that way. Yeah, That's so cool. Museum, I know we stopped. But just in the tunnel close, that they did yeah. with the viewing window. It's cool. But the camera will be the next best thing. It's just. Mm. So, for another activity, I mean, if, if other people have other activities, if we're still. There's still openings, so there's more activities. My wife Sarah is an artist, has an idea for a table. She had the idea, she, she does block printing, and she did a sort of community art event at a, at a conference recently. One of the, actually the, do you know NOFA, the New England Organic Farmers? Mm -hmm. Anyways, she goes to these sort of types of events and does community art. So the idea would be she, we could get a big canvas, rectangular canvas, and then she would carve several alewife blocks, oh my and then God. people would be able to print them, and so then we'd create like an alewife run, hand printed on oh, a canvas, and then fun. it could become like a, a thing for the, like a sign or a, or for, for future, future events. I love That's it. Really it could be like different, I don't know if they would be different colors. She just came up with this idea, so there's still some refinement. She's the artist, let her refine that. <laughs> but it could be, kids would have fun colors. Yeah. Block yeah. prints fun. Absolutely. This is certainly not as fun as that. 
But do we have any like MS4 outreach requirements that would this would yes. be sort of an easy? So we. So the lawn care techniques table that I'm trying to figure out um, is a part of that. Um, we have a brochure that I've been working on that takes our Healthy Lawns Clean Water messaging, updates it a bit um, to also include, you know, minimize your lawn and include native plants and things like that. So I have a brochure that a consultant is printing for us, but I'd like, I would love to get other things to demonstrate, you know, like a, the calibrating your spreader, a bag of fertilizer, how to read that. Um, so, um, and I, would, I was trying to talk my husband into borrowing an electric mower and snowblower, but that, that die on the vine. So if anyone has one and wants to donate it for the day, that would be a cool thing to share as well. An electric um, mower. Yeah, like a lawnmower. Can you get Aj? Can you get Aj? So, one does one. Hmm. Yeah, they have. Uh, they have. Oh, yeah, they have these. I don't know. It's a local business in there. Hmm. Yeah, with their name on it. Right. <laughs> Good advertisement. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that one just it doesn't help you as a way. Electric chainsaws now. Pretty cool. Yeah. Do you have an electric snowblower? We do. This is the first year we really used it, and it was awesome. Really? Our neighbor oh. had one model down from us, and theirs was awful. But ours yeah, kind of is big enough that it. I don't know what yeah. brand it is. It's going to have a lot of, a lot of power because it's right. single, single stage, which doesn't move very much. But for me, it's lighter, and so I, yeah. you know, with those, my husband was out of town. This is a sidebar, but anyway, yeah. So. It starts. So the electric it starts. It starts. Like like my other one with the, our other one was so heavy, and it would die at the end of our driveway, and I couldn't get it back up, and I, you know, have to call my brother. It was not good. So. Ah, the first guy. <laughs> All right, first one to break. <laughs> second one. Yeah, so if anyone has a contact at RJ's, He's on the ZBA meeting. Meryl? He's on the ZBA? Who? Who's on the ZBA? He works at Ajax. Meryl? Mulkowski or something? Oh, we talk about. Anyway, all right. So, because our next meeting is on until the 9th, do you have any ideas about when you want to set up? Did you want to try to do the date before, that morning? So, so can you people help? can come and set up, you know, 9, nine, nine to 10, anytime in there. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, we have a table for ConCom. I think we have enough for us plus to cut. Didn't we have two tables last year? We did. Yeah. yeah. Did, I, I might want another one. I did I bring a table? I might have brought Sarah's table. Oh, okay. We did have two because we had the two models. So, uh, you know, I we do have outreach fund, funds in the budget for outreach activities. It would be nice. We're not doing a food truck this year, um, but it would be nice to be able to have like coffee or something like that on site. Um, and the canvas would be, if that's something that she's she's allowing the town to keep, that would be a great thing to purchase the canvas and the paints. Um, the display models you just borrow, right? So. That's free. Do we, do we want to do a coffee pot? I just want to go to. Duncan and get the jug of or or, or uh, yeah, jug of Joe. Me and Ollie's or something. Well, it's right there, and just have them in the mm -hmm. containers. Yeah. So is it that might what be you a had good... in mind? But again, I, uh, it, so it was so uh, hot last year. Do we want to so I feel like we need Stephanie. to decide as I mean, the date gets closer what we want to do. Bar, but yeah. I think it would be helpful either at this meeting or the next one to approve some sort of funds. <laughs> in support of the event, like up to or not to exceed or something like that. Do you have a number in mind? Um, 150? Yeah, I was going to say 200. 200? 200 sounds like the we, we did. We spent that much on it. We got music last mm -hmm. year and other stuff, and we're not going to do that this year. So, right. so, so we'll we did. can do Move to a uh, to appropriate up to $200 funds for 
public relations and incidentals from the Fowler Alway Festival. Is that right? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Okay. The motion passes. Excellent. Um, um, one thing, Kristen, if, if they need someone to climb around in the water to help get that camera in place, then. He's our man. All right. Yeah. Aquaman. <laughs> cool, Great. Yeah. Thank I'm you. I have a wet suit and whatever. We just lower right. you off yeah. the big wall and then wrap down out of the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Years ago. So kids used to clamber down the wall. You know, see the little kids? Yeah, fishing game would come and <laughs> give them a. That was fun with the bucket. The old. The old way they used to get the. <sighs> that old fish yep. ladder. Yep. I don't like fish ladders. Yep. Um, even when I was a kid, I was not a big fan of fish ladders. I never understood how they were supposed to work. But I thought other people knew best. <laughs> Worth a try. Coffee, can you give me an idea of how much coffee you think would be needed? A couple of a couple of those sand yeah. cardboard. Yeah, I don't think it would be a lot, but, but like I said, last year was so hot that it might be I missed that I hadn't worked at water instead or tea, iced tea or something. So right, but so a water station. Yeah. Where do we put the water in? I have I, plastic. I have, I'm not going there. That wasn't. Well, I know, I know. I, I, can, I think we have time to work that out, but okay. yeah, I, two would be yeah. more than. I don't know what we. So, I mean, so if I'm going to the table, big, Trevor's going to yeah. do uh, prep uh, related. I would think it felt. Whatever he comes up with. I like that. <laughs> you know. Sounds like maybe Kyle can come and do. Do whatever is needed. Be uh, swimming. I, you, it would be good to maybe talk about the bring people around if you want, to, or just help out. It seems like. Do you want to do take people down to String Bridge? Sure. That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. You can put together a little script, or you could. I already did last it. year, and then nobody showed yeah. up for the okay. kayak thing. But yeah. Sarah, Sarah had an idea, and we're, we wouldn't do it this year. But what about instead of just a kayak tour, if we had a kayak race? It was like a well, race. They used to. We used to. They used, they used to, do, used to do, that. do that. Yeah, they used to go down basically to the 101 bridge and back. Yeah. But with the new rec kayaks, you could do like a kid thing. Yeah, we could do a shorter yeah. loop or something, go out around the yeah. ball and back, and I like that. Yeah, we had people pulling that. Some people would. Get canoes and they'd make them like four canoes and they'd make <laughs> yeah, that's what we need. Yeah, you decorate it and have fun. And when you're in the tournament, I'll do that house set awards. up and then whatever you need me to do. But I, I thought one of the stats that I found last that. year was that <laughs> more fish went up the river after the you know the bridge, the dam was gone in ten minutes than had oh, like yeah. in entire pre previous seasons. Um, so it was that much of a barrier to the fish getting off stream. Yeah. So pretty cool. We didn't do it. Just glad that it didn't function well. Right. It checks out. It checks out. That's a good fact. Sounds believable. You do a fact check on it? Yeah. You just did a fact check? Real time. Real time. Are we having a meeting before the ALA? The night. Okay. May 9th. So that works out well. Just one of the. Up. Loose I have many loose ends. Okay, perfect. Great. Okay. Um, and we keep moving. Yeah. Um, you provided this excellent infographic type <laughs> pages in our packet that you pulled together about sustainability tracking. I did. So. I, I was, in my mind, this was more, I mean, this, this obviously is not a greenhouse gas inventory. We did do that, and I would like to re-inventory after, you know, a year or two. But this is more just to kind of establish a baseline so that each year we could look at similar metrics and make some comparisons. And I just grabbed things based on what we did this past year. So if there are metrics that don't make sense to you or metrics that you think are missing, I would love to hear from you. Um, but in general, if, if you're supportive of this and there aren't additional edits, I would love to share this with um, the select board. Um, 
Oh, absolutely. They have a good number on the website. Well, yeah. And sure, it was the same booth. Right, yes. Anyway, so I, yes, I have things. shared it with Energy and Yeah. 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 Because I know um, my wife and I have been participating in a compost since its inception. And it's really a great program. I mean, you got to go there. But I mean, you could also participate by. Uh, working with Mr. Fox, you know, right. on a monthly fee, you know, pick up at your house, yeah. give you the, the supplies, you know, but, you know, if you do it on your own, and it's, it's just so great to, you know, you know, a couple of bags of compost every week, you know, to the, to their bins, and they got them laid out there. And it's great, yeah. Ten tons last yeah, year. It's great. I, I, do we know how many people participate in Mr. Fox? Do we need to maybe try to do a presentation like we do with help C at the select board to see if somebody can come and talk and privately or yeah, it you just mean to them, use our yeah just so with help seek when english was concerned a few months ago that it wasn't doing what it, it probably could so we got them in front of the help the select board and now sustainability is picked up and the schools are picking up on doing some events so I was just wondering about Mr. Fox if it if it would help some of these programs that we're doing to get them to do a, a brief presentation. We helps they didn't have to come here; they did it via Zoom. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, would it be best done in a select board meeting? I don't know. Well, it helps they helped right. a little bit. We had them at <coughs> seven o'clock, and we yeah, had right. yeah. we announced it so people if they so wanted to ask questions. It was literally about. that. Yeah. Yeah. It and we have you know, we have our program. But if you don't, you know, you could also have the, the town program, but, you know. Yeah, whatever. I'm yeah. just saying, I think it when might be a good idea yeah. to, to maybe reach out to Nico because um, he does the agenda. And every, just every once in a while, try to get some of these programs early up in the and agenda. More push it, more people will get it. Yeah. It, it can't hurt. Know, some people may not even know about the program. Right. I think some people... The help see thing was such a good idea, but was talked about, I think, in December of the year before. And I just think yeah. with the holidays or whatever, yeah. it just fell yeah. off people's radar. And so now we're, it's, yeah, yeah. it's you know, a good idea. The thought. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's a good report. This is it's a nice silly question. Yeah. This price under. I don't know, the top two for waste tracking and reduction. Yeah. That number, what, what's the meaning behind that number? Yeah, the that's a good sign? question. I almost should have our rate and what we total, what we spend. So in my mind, I would love to be able to say, hey, you know, in 2023, compared to 2022, we diverted more to the landfill and saved X thousand okay. dollars. But I don't, I, I, without the rate, because rates change on the, um, yeah. oh, the money. on the tipping fees. Yeah. But that's a good point, yeah. Um, you could maybe cut off the. Maybe you don't need the money. The sense. Maybe you just talk about. Because everything else you've talked about, <laughs> you talked about the, the weight and stuff. Right. Say that again. Everything else you talked about, pounds of food, you haven't talked about money. Yeah. Same thing here. Maybe just keep it, you know, everything's the same. Comparison of, of gross weight. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you're right. That's a good point. Next year, yeah. those numbers could change. Right. Because I'm sure our, you'd get there our waste there. management uh, budget's going to go down. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Good, good catch. Yeah, yeah and I, it was just a clarifying question. So. Yeah. Because we could always get the dollars saved yeah. right. in the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like that. Thank you. It almost, we would almost see like, I like the stacked bar graphs, and then you could have it over a year, so you know you'd have like the landfill, recycling, oh. compost, LC. You know, and then for each year, you could see the yeah. proportion. So but that would, would you would need, obviously, more data. More than what this. I would love need for more. this, and I initiated it, but to have an intro page that's kind of like the dashboard, and that would be a great place to show that, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that that becomes your year to year snapshot comparison. And then this is a bit more of the specifics for each of them you know what i mean right yeah because without a year to year without context for the numbers it's right. hard to wrap your brain right. around what it means but is there anything else 
that's trackable for? Not easily. You know, there was talk from SAC with interest in breaking it down into breaking recycling down, but that's very challenging. No, yeah, I mean, you know, we're talking, we got land, we got recycling waste, um, renewable energy. Um, I don't know if there's any other, you know, another metric. Yeah, I mean, gas stations built in town. So there's one, no, there's one public station and that's actually at the Volvo deal, dealership. Um, there's, there's conduit installed. So last year or the year before, yeah, last year the planning board adopted the make ready um, site and subdivision regulation that requires commercial and multifamily new construction to have enough capacity on their chart, uh, electric panel and install conduit for the ability of um, installing electric vehicle charging stations in the future. And you have to meet a certain percentage based on the number of units um, for uh, employees, I guess. Well, the, um, but it doesn't require them to yeah. install it. And so through that process, Noria actually has potential to install two charging stations. We thought that they were going to, but they're not in yet. So we didn't count it. But And then a couple other sites recently have come up. How's it going to work with the new legislation that was passed to create thousands and thousands of charging stations in the country? Or is that just going to be on the highways? So I know. There's a whole yeah, statewide sure. plan yeah. that's being developed with DOT. Yeah, I, I was figured it would be at the the rest areas, you know, the bigger rest areas and things that they have, but they have to be more than that. that. It's distributed, yeah. But I think that, that, that would chosen. be one of them. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I mean, the highways have, yeah. but I mean, yeah, I'll have to, right. like, like, you know, you got like the store. gas stations there. Yeah. We own them, and then, right? Parking lots. I don't know, okay. okay. I just, anyways. I just, you know, is there any other metrics to measure? I mean, these are good, I mean, you know. Yeah, if you have thoughts, send them to me. Just a quick, the yes. Noria is Nuria. There's a U in there. So it's N -U -R -I -A. Oh, thank you. So what is that? So I Googled it. And oh. It's, 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 it's,
discussion. Yeah. Okay, they do good work over at NHGC. They do. <laughs> uh, if we knew someone that worked with them, we should tell them about it. <laughs> Thanks for the work. All right, I'll, I'll, uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? None. All right, the motion passes. We'll keep moving to uh, property management reigns. Born. So no specific details other than repairs are continuing. Most of the work he's doing, he takes the parts to his shop. Um, and then, so for example, the window repairs, the, all the windows were removed. He's been working on um, repairing the sashes and the reglazing the windows. Um, and impressively, I think it was um, re only two windows needed new replacement parts of all the windows out there. I don't know if you remember, but we had had an assessment a while back and they were like, oh, these are all, forget it. You need all new windows. And so, um, so it, it really makes a difference to have someone who's committed to restoring. Um, so that's great news. He's now started on, um, all of the clapboards have been painted and are on, stored on site in the barn. He's got, um, he's working on the, if you remember the bracket, for those of you uh, on the grant application, you might remember some of the details were fashioning these brackets that kind of connect the bowing sill mm -hmm. to the foundation. He's working on that now. Um, yeah, so it's been great. He's been really wonderful to work with, very communicative. Um, and I think soon, so one thing that might come up in the near future is one of the town's commitments is to keep the area mowed so this, you know, there's no issues with ticks and scaffolding and problems with all of that. So we do have, we have committed to do that. Um, it's just keeping an eye on, on that and get, making sure the barn, the area immediately adjacent to the barn is mowed. Okay. Who's going to do that? Um, hopefully public works. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. Have they, are you, you're, you've been going out and overseeing some of this? Yeah. We but, talk at least weekly, Stephen and I. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. And has anyone from public work, weren't they were going to be involved too? In the, yeah. Um, no, but they are so short staffed. They're so, yeah. Yes. Okay. It's going okay. So I okay. think we're doing a good job. I have Doug Eastman, you know, he's a building inspector. If I have any questions, I can ask him about structural yeah. stuff, but we're really not there. Okay. Like, there's not, it's windows. It's not. Uh -huh. I got it. <laughs> I can look at a window. If you need help with the mowing, I can always oh. pop over. Just let me know. Oh, that's a thought. Mow for him. Yeah, we well, should sure buy a battery. Try it out there. Yeah. Keep it as a button. Should there be some like public engagement in, with him on site? Would it be cool to have like, like have an open barn with him like showing the work he did at the end or something? Yeah, I think maybe, so yes, I think that would be good. There's still a lot of work and equipment that will be on site yeah. in the near future, so maybe when we get further, further down, the line. down the line. Maybe a video? Yeah, we yeah. have a video. Right now. Yeah. Yeah, or Bob could come out. Yeah. So, I don't know, I'm just thinking it's sort of a cool process. Though. Yeah. There's, I'm interested in it. Yeah. And I haven't been out there to see it, so. Anytime, if you want to. Yeah. You know, Do you think he's taking them. photos as he's working? He does send me photos. I guess I should Good. be sharing those with you guys. Um, well, it would be great to, even for the public if, if you do a public thing at the end to show the yeah, before and after. The, the yeah. The before and yeah. after. And like, yeah, none of them are up. You know, they're just stacked in the barn. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they, the paint looks great. <laughs> barn red? Yes, it's, a, it's the classic <laughs> barn red. Red, yeah. Can try to sneak any purple in. A little bit gentle. He's, he's a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy wouldn't <be> fly. <laughs> no. Okay, well, that's great. I'm so yeah. glad it's happening. Um, and then, not related to maintenance of the barn, but this year we need to. Um, renew our lease with the farmer. The five-year expiration is, was last year. So we, I need to connect with Dan, Darren Davis um, 
and you know confirm that he's still on board. I believe so. I haven't heard otherwise. But and then I believe I need to have the select board agree that you know present to them that everything's been going well, and then we can renew without re-signing a lease because it says as long as both parties to the lease are supportive, you can renew it. So. Um, once I have official confirmation from Darren, I'll probably bring that to the select board for confirmation, unless anyone has concerns or anything that we need to bring up. It seems like it's worked decently. Well, pleased. Well, I feel mm -hmm. like it. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, I know we've changed. It's changed the last three years or something. And it's doing the earlier mud cut. And yeah. Been okay with that. I think that's worked well. So, but I do need to communicate with them soon. Okay. Good. All right. The SST cleanup is approaching. Is that right? Yep, so Kyle and Dave Short are coming out, right, Kyle? Yep, coming out to help. Um, May 2nd is the cleanup date, and I think there's four different classes that we'll take to clean up the parking lot of, S you know, the parking lot edge along the river with SST, the, um, the driveway that heads down to Linden Street, the field area, which actually has a pretty big platform that was used for fireworks that we need will take quite a bit of hands to haul out and then all the way to the skate park so i think we have enough you know, fireworks people kids hmm. set fireworks out all in the field apparently yeah, yeah. Are we each going to take an hour, or are we going to... So, no. So we'd go for each session and take a group, split the groups up. So there'll be 60 kids per session, or is that... Oh, um, no, it's 20 week. kids per... So, right. Did I write that down in my memo, maybe? I can't remember the times, but I think it's four times a day. Three oh yeah, there it is. Three groups of 20 students. Three groups of 20 students each. So each time, so eight to nine o'clock, um, all three of us will be there. We'll divide the crew up and then we'll go to different parts on the property and then haul all the material out to Linden or Court. What if we have extra stuff that we could do if we do all the cleanup? first two hours yeah sure I mean there's always stuff that could we could do out there there's you know the there's tons of invasives we could do some invasive removal but I feel like I, Linden Street is always in need of uh, just along the road yeah that way area yeah yeah not as bad as it used to be years and years ago I do have pickers so we'll be able to get that pond or whatever the yeah, you know, the wet area yeah. on the more no, no, yeah. side. I yeah. by the time so you get there, you welcome all the kids. They collect gloves. By the time we get on site, it's like twenty minutes yeah. of work, and then right. you're out. So I don't think we'll exhaust all of the stuff that's there. But if we do, I'll have a backup plan. Awesome. Or you could have a, but you're good at that yeah, stuff. Yeah, Kyle's got ideas. Right there. All right. We, we should have it be a, a contest each uh, We each absolutely hour. should. Whichever. Once group, we can get the most. Yeah, whoever gets the most litter, and then we can litter. put it on the uh, sustainability report. They'll, yeah, they'll get a uh, yeah, the metric. six by nine <laughs> plot of uh, pollinators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to have give her some native seeds for the kids to grow. Yes. Anyways. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on to trails. McDonald Gates Stewart's looks like we are back open, but we need some more help over there. We do. So this is more for public. If public is watching, or any of you are welcome to as well. But um, Tuesdays and Thursdays we don't have coverage for opening the gate. Um, we have someone who will close. Oh, we have someone to close it. Yep. And so the gate ideally opens as close to 8, 8.30-ish, you know, in the morning. Um, so if someone's interested in doing that, I can set that up. Just contact me. You can get, call me or email me at kmurphy at exeternh.gov. 
Yeah. If you don't have anyone, it's just not open. I just open it. I've been opening it. Oh, you have? Yeah. What's the theory on closing it at night? Is it? So we have had, so McDonald Conservation Area is unique in that we have a public parking area essentially on private land where we have a conservation easement. And the person who owns the underlying land is very concerned about people parking after hours, um, dumping, drug exchanges. There some of that. There's it's been not just, uh, a, lot of, a lot of activity, um, and so it's required a lot of calls, of you know, police calls. So it really has been 10 times better to just close the gate. People can still, even with the gate closed, you can still get to the property because there's enough space to head in park. Yep, uh, so it doesn't prohibit people from using it, but you don't have this hidden parking lot to hang out and do your stuff. So. Well, that's great because the weather fishing game will either have already stocked or will be stocking this week. So, I mean, you know, you'll start to see four, five, six cars there now during the daytime. It's a very popular uh, spot to go fishing up and down the river. Yes, so that was more I'll talk to you about one of the mornings. Oh, okay. I'll talk to you. I am. Okay. Let me know. I'm right there. I'm in close time. All right. I'm going to skip trails item two for now. Okay. Uh, okay. Still needs some flushing out. Sure. Hey, yeah, that one. Yeah. There are a lot of questions on that one. Oh, okay. All right. Because so. there's a reason why we closed that gate, put that gate up there. That road. Road. Mm -hmm. It was the town dumping grounds. Yeah, this that was not opening the QB Road gate. Oh, it wasn't? Okay. No, it, it was just kind of having an individual okay, receive wait. permission to maintain that area. Oh, wait, wait, wait. QB Road? Yeah, just It's great. It yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, it's a cool area. It really is. There's one thing, there's barbed wire along the side of it, which is kind of, I don't know. Yeah, so you, at, before you get to the field, just oh, past the field, is that where you're talking yes. about? Yes. So when Fish and Game did their timber harvest, the contractor who prepped the road piled the fencing up, and technically they're supposed to remove it. But it's been a few years, so it's a concern. Probably could take a harder stance on it, um, but yeah. Okay. Any other trails? A lot of things people, are drying out. Everything's dried out pretty good by now, and there are a lot of people out there. Yeah. Warm it up. Yeah. And good. Get it before the black flies come. Although they're probably out now. Yeah, high fire danger right now. Mm high -hmm. fire danger. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next we have a town-wide cleanup. We're promoting that. This That's is right. Roadside. It's not next week, but the week after. Is that right? No, it's next you, week. Next, next week, you can pick next up week. supplies at Public Works from 7 to 3.30, and those supplies, are they'll provide gloves, bags, and, you know, visibility vests. Um, we'll also have um, two volunteers. Uh, I should have brought their names, but I didn't. Um, two volunteers have offered to have a table downtown and, um, and hand out supplies there because people might not be able to get to public work, so they're going to do that on Saturday, Earth Day. Um, and then individuals can, on Earth Day, drop anything that they clean up. They can drop off themselves for free at the crossroad land or at the transfer station. Yeah. And um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> or if it's really big stuff or you don't want to put it in your car, totally fine. Just a, um, contact Public Works um, to arrange a pickup so they know where to look. 
Are those the names that are in your memo, Kristen? Oh. Uh, Flewelling and Gabriel Liber? Yes. There you, go. you have it. See, I'm so organized, but then I forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the two volunteers, Heather Flewelling and Gabriel <laughs> um, Lyberg, they, so Heather had organized a cleanup during COVID, and she was really interested in, you know, redoing that. So she was the one who reached out to me with the concept. Um, we just expanded it to be a committee and townwide thing. And um, yeah, so I'm super thankful for them volunteering. And then I did have a, a company who saw the flyer. They're looking for some community service stuff. So their company is going to use that day as part of their community service cool. day. So I think we'll have some good cleanup happening. That's great. Huh. And more pounds of litter. More pounds of litter. Yeah, we picked up a bunch on by our house on Brentwood Road, and there's a few more sections that I want to target. It's Great. bad. So um, April 22nd is Thursday. Yeah, Saturday, yeah April down by the pond and then up by the river areas. It's bad all along. Bud Light, the uh, preferred beer of, of some litter drugs, it seems, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. It is crazy. Uh, yeah, now's a good time before things start growing to get in there and pick up junk. All right, so we're doing that. You, our next item. Oh, we're looking at the uh, planning <coughs> for this farmer's market opportunity with the, uh, you want to talk about it? Sure. I'm not describing it. So Seco Seat Local, that's the organization that runs the farmer's market. Um, they, I attended a meeting when they were talking about logistics for the upcoming year, and they had said they would love to have once a month some sort of theme or organized activity, um, you know, that community members have a table and, you know, share like, hey, we have these volunteer board vacancies or um, the sustainability, we're promoting, you know, I don't know, reusable grocery bags and we're providing them for free this morning or the electric vehicle displays could be there. Um, and so I think it would be a great thing for the Energy Committee, CONCOM and the Sustainability Committee to get together, maybe, brainstorm some concepts. Um, if you count the months out when the farmer's market is active in Exeter, it really, if you did it monthly, it would mean six different days throughout the season that you would do it. So there's really only six themes. So um, yeah. yeah, I think it would be a great thing. And it, it doesn't have to be those committees, you know, just like our volunteer boards are desperate for volunteers, I think that would be a great way to reach a different audience. So we're kind of outside of our, um, outside of talking to the same people that we always talk to. Very visible, they provide, you know, obviously we could have the table for free. Um, I think it's a great opportunity. So I'm just putting it out there. Well, do you have any proposed dates for the meeting? No. We have to post it. Yeah. For all three groups, three committees. Well, so uh, I, I mean, what I would do is I would just have a representative from each group there bringing the ideas forward. I think you could do that without posting because you don't have a quorum with anyone present. It would just be like a work group. I don't know, Nancy. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I'm, I just had a webinar. Because then we'll need to get, you know, like subcommittee, even subcommittees have to have be posted. Well, so we post it. Yeah, I mean, you, just, you can do it as a that's work committee. Problem. Right. Yeah. You can just do it as a work committee as long as it's, you post where it is yeah. for the public you to, wants yeah. to attend. You have to do that. It doesn't yeah. have to be recorded or videotaped. No, no. And someone can just do general minutes of who is there, but it, it probably should be posted. Yeah. It's got to be. People have to know about it and have yeah. access to it if they want. Yeah. Yeah, because we do work committees. We still, when we have work committees, we still post them. Right, but it's not like a but SAC it, meeting or the CONCOM meeting. It's like it's a subcommittee or a work well, it is, group. Yeah, you know, some, yeah. I say, 
question was. But yeah, yeah but we did with the all boards. And there wasn't probably quorums from each board there either, but we still, it, it's better yep. to just, it's okay. better to be. Um, so at least you know, if we're, you know, it would take pretty soon. Yes. So I guess maybe start with who, want, does anyone want to be a part of the CONCOM who can lead that up or? <laughs> well, I can bring it up Monday night when I do my report um, okay. to Nico to see if anybody, you know, if if there is a table, a month available, yeah. if a couple of people from the select board would want to do a table for volunteer yeah. physicians and talk about our, our different committees. Sounds so I, I, I will talk to Nico and see if you know I'm sh I can, I'm pretty sure we would be interested, but I can't speak for the board. Okay. Um, and you know I, I don't want to take away from any other ideas that the other committees have either. So, but I'm definitely willing to do that. Okay. Because That'd it's be important. Great. We really need some help. And okay. Get the town newsletter there, and then we well, it's a good advertise. Good. Things going on in town. Well, it's a good forum for the communication committee. Yeah. To, to get gather input because you get a lot of people there. Yeah. I mean, that's a good point. Maybe this is bigger than just these three committees. Maybe this is something Could the be. town should consider. Maybe after hearing from select board reps, maybe that will help. Maybe they have thoughts for whether. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it doesn't need to just solicit any more. I, I'm just trying to get everyone together between now and then. All the committees, it, it might be a little bit more difficult. When does the farmer's market start? Next month. Next month? Not in my memo, I hope. Maybe. No. Yeah, well, we'll get you but someone could enough. start it yeah. and then it could evolve. It With could all be the more construction. You can't the yeah, the 11th, is, the 11th is when it starts, and they did meet on the site with Paul. Um, and identified it's still viable to fit the tables of the farmer's market on the in-town side. So it will continue starting mm -hmm. May 11th. May 11th. Maybe. May 11th. Maybe. Uh, yeah, we, feel, I, we don't know what's going on with the siphons. That was my right. only thing. But it should be fine. Be, right. I, mean, I don't know. Why don't, don't know. Oh, I know that. I right? Know. I don't mean to be. But well, no, no. it's so frustrating because we're just playing it day by day practically with the siphons. So, But even with the exactly. siphon project continuing, they, they, they did go out there with Seco Seat Local. There Good. was enough. And Paul. There was enough space for Excellent. them to fit. In I the, was in pilot know, meeting, so tight, thank you. A tight air, tighter area, much tighter than they are normally normally okay. used to, but um, the, the good news is the farmer's market will continue. I mean, we can no, commit can't. to... No cows can drive in there. Oh, right. I'm sorry, it's going right. to okay. go to court, but I don't want to go there's there. Going to be a, there's going to be a coming. So we'll... Let you know that. If I can't drive in there, one thought that I'm, can't drive in there. One thought that I would be willing to offer for the first event, and since there's <laughs> other people who enjoy kayaking, Maybe the kickoff for the first one would be at the end of, you know, the farmer's market, we do a kayak tour. Kyle, would you? <laughs> yeah, Kyle, I just thought you would know. You could put all the food in your kayak. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No. So we could highlight that, that um, Parks and Rec has those things for rent throughout the rest of the season, but you could borrow them that night. Just a thought. It's a okay. It'd be great. Yeah, it could just fun. be a well, you don't have an idea. It doesn't have to be done in May. The kayak thing. This is true. I was just trying to come up with something. No, it's an idea. Right? I mean, it didn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be the first one. So I'm thinking of the other committees. Communication just met last Thursday. So I will bring that up Monday night. I'll ask Mel Molly about it. I can't think of an, any other committees that might want to have a table for, a few, for the, for the mm -hmm. farmer's market. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, let's start there. Uh, uh, if I think of any, I will. I'm sorry. I'm just so tired. I can't it, think of any either. Right. I mean, you're not going to the zoning board. Because, you're not no, going to the planning right. board. Right. So, other than. Recreation committee? Mm. Maybe the rec, yeah. I don't know. Talk to him. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who's on the rec for the select board. Okay. I can't think. Um, 
I know I'm back up, but I can't think of it. Well, just, just get the word out and see if Yeah, I'm going to run by them them and see, but I, I, what is the hour for the, uh, it's Thursdays, and it's uh, like 10 to 6? No. That's an afternoon. Two to two to six. I, I never get to go to them because I'm always <laughs> at work in board time. Later, 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 I'd have to take the afternoon six, off. Yeah. I think it's like the signs are two fifteen. I don't want to say two fifteen. Really, I thought it was like that. Okay. Not really. It's not in the morning. Okay. So it's on, in the afternoon on Thursdays. So that's all I need to know at this point. Um, two thirty to six p.m. Okay. Thank you. It used you. to be the lead into the concert. Remember that's what I years ago. Come on. Um, okay. I mean, you know, the topic at the all boards meeting too was communication. I think right. this is really a great hub that people come to weekly. Yeah. Where it's like, you know, there, there could be this little touch point with <clears throat> the actual town. So yeah. like, look, this is what's going on. Here are some of the boards. This is, I think, absolutely an opportunity to like right. try to pull people into these volunteer boards. But uh, yeah, just even even if there came like a newsletter came out or any, something like that, that would be a great place to be shown that what people. And I think that's buy. one of the thought things that they're they're mulling around is a newspaper. But how to is get it? it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we just try. Well. Not everybody's on social media, or you know. <laughs> So anyway, we're just trying to reach as many people as we can. I'm happy to help. I would love to participate in that. In okay, I'll see what I can. I'll try, I'll try to put a memo out to everyone before the meeting so that they can think about it okay. instead of me putting them on the spot Monday night, so. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Um, spring tree program. Peter Waltz is doing it again. He is. Can we get him back on the concom? I don't think so. <clears throat> so Peter Waltz is again hosting the spring tree program. Um, the trees will arrive sometime between April 24th and April 28th. <clears throat> Um, and so he is looking for volunteers. He'll know a little more specifically when the packing would happen. If you remember, you, you, they get come in bulk and then they get put into individual bags and then they get a sticker that says donated by the Exeter Conservation Commission. Um, so, you know, having volunteers to help do that is great. I raised it at the tree committee meeting this morning as well in search of volunteers. Um, so, if you're interested in packing, I will be sure to let you know more specifically what the timing would be. It's usually on like a Sunday afternoon, I think, or a Saturday, Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Tree committee, there's another committee that could go in the back way. Yes. Table. So, um, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to reach out to them. Yep, I did. There's we, no select board rep to that one. So, uh, he's so, he, so the pack yep, is so the 23rd. Kind of this one. Yeah. So if you're not aware, because he hasn't done this the last few years? Oh, no, he's done it every he's single done year. It, but oh. he, so, um, I don't remember as much so, recently, but he goes to Lincoln Food School and uh, Yeah, so, so the program is, fit, I think it's fifth yeah. graders. He did um, it in 2020? Yes. He did it different. He did a drive through pickup okay. in 2020. So he adopted for COVID. Huh. 2021, he did a pre recorded video. Um, this year, so basically what it does is um, he gets these very tiny seedling trees. Every fifth grader at the school gets one. They hear about, you know, the importance of trees, how to plant trees, how to care for trees, and then they get their own tree that they can then bring home uh, and plant. And so, um, yeah, I think this is, I, I want to look it up. I think it's year, it might be year 33 or 34 that yeah. he's had this program running for which is really cool. So one year, CONCOM ran this thing like, show us show us you next to your tree that you well, we received. And so we got a few photos. Um, some other students planted them on the Lincoln Street um, Park uh, playground or property. Um, and those trees, according to Eileen, are huge now. So I think there's, yeah, it's kind of a fun program. Feel good fun program. And every year, CONCOM has supported the funding for the purchase of the trees. And everything else is basically handled by Peter. 
he coordinates with the schools, he picks the days, he does the presentation, and delivers the trees. Okay, so I'll move that we approve that allocation of $338 from the Conservation Land Management or Land Administration category to reimburse Peter for these tree expenses. Second. Second. Any comments? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. I'm hearing none. That passes. Oh, what? Sorry, I forgot to include minutes again this year, didn't I? Oh, uh, so we don't have minutes. We, um, unless you reviewed them online, I don't know. Yeah, we okay. can wait on those. Okay. Um, Sorry about that. That seems to be a habit. <laughs> Do was you, there a watershed walk? <laughs> oh, yes. Um, Melissa Talley reached, she's the Great Bay Piscataqua Waterkeeper. She's trying to coordinate these, a couple walks throughout the Great Bay watershed where different communities would host a walk in a public place along a river, talk a little bit about river habitat, water quality, the connection to Great Bay, and then the end of the series would end with a, some sort of like sip and, some sort of, I don't know, I, I read want, like a wine tasting or oh, something like that. Oh, that's where I at, thought you were going with that. <laughs> at um, Spring Creek or Spruce Creek. We have a vineyard in Newfield down there. No, it's a, no, it's a, it's a, I think it's really? property yeah. managed, what? Yeah. Property managed by um, the Fourth, is it the Fourth Society? Yeah. I don't know. One second, please. Sorry, poorly mm -hmm. prepared. Uh, yeah. So the concept is um, four to six walks throughout the area, culminating with a paddle and pour and oysters and beer party at Creek Farm on Sagamore Creek. I don't know where that is. Yeah, but I think, isn't that the Forest Society Castle. property or something? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's oh, gorgeous. It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 Is that an email you have yeah. with that information? Um, if it is, if you could forward yeah. it so I can add it, because it's not in your memo. Right, because there's a lot of moving parts still, but. Yeah, I just need the basic information okay. when I give yep. my report. Yep, yep, I can okay. send you that. Thank you. What was it? Sip, pour. Sip and pour. Pour and sip. It is called a watershed watershed walks okay. so <laughs> do they just want to advertise um, so they were reaching out to a bunch of people looking for properties to walk I said you know I'd be happy to lead one in Exeter I also reached out to Warren Biggins because PEA has quite a bit of river frontage and so um, he said he'd be willing to lead a walk as well. So we could do two. She was looking for like two walks within a community. So I was thinking maybe we could do one there with PEA and do one either. Yeah, McDonald, between McDonald and the, yeah. And the trail in, it goes along the road. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was looking for about a court. mile, about a mile. Um, so that could work. I also thought of maybe um, from the skate park through Morissette, bump over to Linden Commons out to the railroad tre trestle because there's some really interesting views of you know bank erosion and mm. some other things. So um, it's just a concept at this time, but I think it would be cool if our community participated. PEA is definitely up for it, but I would love um, someone to do it with me, so it's not just me talking, if you're interested. And this, all we know for time frame is summer so far. She's just kind of put out a feeler for interested towns or organizations. Well, I think we have some areas that are conducive to good walks, you know, so. Kristen, I'm always willing to help out with any awesome. stuff, so yeah. just feel free to reach out anytime you need someone to. Okay. Great. 
great. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'll, be, okay. I'll be hounding Melissa for her boat a lot this summer. So. <laughs> nice. I probably All right. Sounds good. And I'll get you a couple liner. Yeah, just to explain it, I sure. don't need the information really on Portsmouth because that's, right, that's the Sagamore one? Yep. And also promoting it for anyone to go. It's all, so. It's up to you. It's like. I'm also only promoting it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so. Okay. We're just promoting the location of the next one. Yes, but if you have some, like, background or whatever, tell me what they do or what they've done, okay. something. Sure. I could Google it, but I, no, I'm that. more concerned I'd have the wrong information, so. Sorry, what, what did you need the info on? The walk the itself. Walk the walk itself. Walk itself. Yeah. If, yeah, if we want to do it in Exeter, it, it just... I drive people crazy, but my, I try to be as detailed as possible. Got it. When I do my reports at the end of the select board meeting, I usually have about three pages to, <clears throat> yeah. That way people okay. can keep up. We're That's trying good. to communicate yeah. better. Better than I. So on that topic, do we have other reports from other committees um, that we want to talk about? Anything from <laughs> River Study, Sustainability, <clears throat> Energy Tree Committee? So Energy and Sustainability had a joint meeting at their last session. We invited um, presenters from the Northeast Energy Efficiency Partnership, and they talked about the role of energy codes and building codes and tools to use them to incentivize more efficient construction. Um, Basic, it was very interesting, kind of high-level conversation, but once we talked a little bit more in detail with them, uh, we were able to kind of bring it down to levels that would could result in some actions in Exeter. So both of the committees, um, apparently Durham has, a, their codes say um, that they defer to the current energy code once it's printed. New Hampshire, we're delayed um, three, three years. So we're three years behind the produced building code and energy code, um, the way our state has adopted it. We just moved to 2018 code. So wait, it's more than just three years. 2018 code is what is Exeter follows, New Hampshire follows. I'm not speaking very but well. To, Let to, me start to, over. So New Hampshire, New Hampshire as a state has adopted the 2018 building code as of January, this past January. We're moving toward, we, they're looking at moving toward the 2023 building code, but it has not happened yet. It is up to individual communities if they want to adopt the more progressive codes and the way um, Durham wrote their zoning code, uh, ordinance. It says adopt the current code as it's printed. So they don't have to wait for the, for, for the um, state. state to adopt it. Yeah, sorry. Um, which is a really, it, it sounds like a simple thing, but it's a very progressive approach, very progressive. And so um, they're interested in meeting with the Durham Energy Committee. We're gonna try to set something up. The other um, thing, the other New Hampshire community that we heard about was Keene, who has adopted the Green Energy Code, which is even more progressive. Um, and I don't know enough about it to speak, but. Um, anyway, so it was a very interesting presentation, a good opportunity for those um, boards to get together in areas where their interests overlap. That was recorded probably. Yeah. So you can watch it. For yeah. Them. yeah, it was the first part too, and it, it, it was interesting, but it was yeah, very technical. Very technical at the beginning, and then it was hard to hear some of the questions because. Mm -hmm. There weren't mics there, but it, it was interesting. Yeah. I'll be interested here with the reports from Durham when they meet with the Durham people and how it's working out for them, but I think they just passed that, right? It's still fairly new. No, they adopted that a while ago. It, I think he said 2018, so. Okay, so there would be some results. Yep. Oh, good. Is it, I don't know, see? Maybe it was keen. I don't know, but anyway. I think so. Hmm. So those are really the only committee. Tree Committee, um, they received their growth award again this year, which is not only were they reinstated as a tree city, hmm. reinstated Exeter as a tree city USA, 
they also got received a growth award for operating over and above, um, you know, the bare minimum. <coughs> they did a lot last year, so it's great. Uh, Rivers Advisory Committee met as well. I'm just going back through those minutes because just to refresh my memory. So um, we did receive funding from uh, the Clean Water State Result <coughs> Revolving Fund, uh, as well as the Coastal Resilience Grant. Um, so they'll be doing more assessment work throughout um, 2024 on the pickpocket dam feasibility. Um, there there was a um, basically a Gantt chart and a schedule that was passed out at that meeting along with important meeting dates that will be you know, happening with the contractors as that process moves forward. Is VHP doing that one too? I think it was VHP, yes. Um, and it's looking at maintenance versus removal versus... Yep, they'll be doing all of those. Um, Same. The great dam. Same ones, so all this, the feasibility the impacts, assessments, yeah, yep. yep. You can do this, this, yep. this, and this. So actually, oh yeah, here I have the, the task list in front of me. So yeah, data collection, including, um, you know, topographic surveys, bathymetric surveys, all of those, alternative identifications with conceptual design, sediment sampling, hydro, hydrologic and hydraulic sampling and analysis. Um, and then they'll bring all of that to that committee and we will we'll bequeath it to the public. Cool. Yeah, keep us in, involved. That's cool. Um, I want to go to some of those. Should I think they're fun. Restoring the river one day at a time. Has anybody ever cleared like the blockages in the river, like to make it like navigable? <coughs> so there used to be volunteer. Do you want to tell? Maybe you know. There used to be somebody years and years ago that would go up to the spring, uh, with a boat, motorboat, and clear the uh, you know the trees that were down the river. I mean, there's a process, but again, you can't remove the the root ball from the banks. Uh, it's very hard to keep track of, you know, how to do that, and it's, you know, it's well, how to feel or somebody to do it. I assume um, you, can't, you can't use a chainsaw or anything, right? Yes, you can. Yeah, you yeah. just can't. You can make, you can cut an opening for nav nav navigability. Say the word navigability. No, I'm saying it wrong. We know I just said navigate. We know what you're trying to navigate you the river. The root balls out yeah. the, uh, right. the, the banks. That, that's because of the service. So. And you have to be careful. So be, if the tree's been there a while and there's an impoundment behind it, you have to be careful that you're not releasing, you know, huge volume of water yeah. Um, yeah. and so don't cause erosion. It's also, you know, dangerous. Technically so, yeah. challenging. Yeah. 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 The last time so. the town really did something was, boy, it's gonna be about 10 years ago, on Court Street, down by the Perry Piece, there was a huge, I mean, trees had come down, floated down there, and it was a huge backup. And we hired a professional outfit out of Rochester to do it. And I'm telling you, they were out there with John boats and ropes and saws and... Yeah, I, I have noticed there's some pretty yeah, good-sized trees yeah, right down now, there. right in that same area. Right now, there's some... Well, see, it's because the river does a lot of there. Yeah. yeah. It's a big oxbow. Eventually, over time, the river will come... Those oxbows will be cut off. Yeah. So that's... Yeah, you can't, motor, you can't use motorized boats anymore either. Hmm? You can't use motorized boats on the river anymore either. And within a, a certain... Really? I didn't think you could anymore. I thought that I ended... Yeah. I think you can on the Exeter and Little River. You cannot in... Um, like off of Gilmore and going in that way. Well, in the reservoir, you can't go anymore. No, but I mean like in the Gilmore, Gilman Park huh. area when you really? launch, I thought we stopped that because of the water. Source. Oh, that's a good question. I, I will look that up. When Mark and I used to take the boat, we we had to stop using the motor because that was being changed. I thought there were signs. Mm -hmm. You could but, be right. But we'll check. I don't don't sure. go I by. Don't you can't always go by my memory. The last time I, you know, I mean, we could take the boat. We just couldn't. Yeah. Fifteen years ago. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, yeah, and it was long after. A motorized boat on it could have been story. something that was 30, 40 years ago, and then they changed their mind. I don't know. I don't know. Many. I just remember I years know, ago, we, we had to stop using the motor. I don't think there's an ordinance in Exeter for that, but I don't know. Yeah, so the it's town the ordinance for... talks about, um, I think you might be right. So um, the places that you cannot have motorized boat is Waterworks Pond, Pickpocket Dam Pond, Brickyard Pond, Calcord Pond, and Clemson Dam. So not where I thought. What's Clemson Dam? Yeah. Clemson Pond is a little pond across the way from the parkway. You see probably the Clemson Mills where they put all their pebbles. It's what people it's walk, when you see people walking oh, out there, right, 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 right. Now, they're walking the perimeter. Yeah, now it's just yeah. the overflow for So, hmm. Yeah, Calgary Pond isn't very big either. No, not at all. Just put that foot pound in because it is. Damn. It is on the like the far the other side, but there's no real way to get over there either. Okay. Yeah. I'll test Doug to see if he would go under the bridge. Where Calgary? Calgary Pond. Well, you can right above the dam. There's a place you can right, 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 but then oh, you have to go underneath the bridge to go under to the, go the bridge to go mm. up river yeah. to where it's. Hmm. Anyhow. Anyhow. But yeah, I, again, it's it's difficult. There was a lot of erosion. Banks come to you know. I mean, after some of the big floods, you couldn't believe the amount of tree banks that got eroded um, just below second, below second bridge, below, below Linden Street. Yeah. You know, that was just a nightmare. There was a small group of people that included Carlos, who were interested in organizing in the super dry summer months, some sort of, you know, cutting to, to improve um, votability. Um, but because of the liability associated with it, we said we couldn't have that be a town sanctioned activity. Like if you want to do it, but that's kind of on your own. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. you have to do a raft. The problem is there's just mm. so much. It's like, you know. Mm. Interesting. Okay. It's too bad because. It's too bad because it's. Years ago, we had a crew, we used to have the crew kayak race. Started. Yeah, and, and the no, people no. would just, in the spring when they take their boats up, they would just take care of the trees, whether it was the hands or whatever, it was just done, yeah. you know? Then you get a lot more beaver activity in the river now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how's that? <laughs> you know, they're, they're helping to bring trees down. <laughs> That's what beavers like to do. Was a couple of years ago, we had a big beaver dam right behind, right above the, the, the bridge of Linden Street. We had to break up. Okay, well, any other talk on that? Otherwise, we'll go to correspondence. Um, I just have a few things I just wanted random things to mention. Um, Allison, this was Allison's last month. She couldn't make it. So I have to see her off the commission. No, I think I acknowledged her in February when she was here, but I'll acknowledge her again. Appreciate it, Allison Everhart, and all the work she's done. She's leaving the cruise? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. She's had a, conf a fair amount of conflicts that have prevented her from coming, and, but now she's officially, her term is up. So we have that seat open. So we continue to be down. So I know, if you, if you know of anyone, we have space. Um, and then the other news was about Carlos. I think everyone got that email, which is sad to hear about Carlos's health um, and that ongoing GoFundMe that Dave organized. Uh, so that was pretty. I did not get that. Oh, okay. It's okay. We can send it to you. Please. Um, Carlo, Carlos was diagnosed with um, ALS. He's living in Costa Rica with his family. He I moved knew down that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and 
essentially is immobilized on liquid liquid food, so there's a lot of medical expenses associated with that and um, complexity. So Dave Short created a GoFundMe page. Dave Short and others created a GoFundMe page that's shared on the Exeter unofficial community page. Forum. Community forum. Um, Website. Yeah. So. Um, and there's been great contribution to that. Okay. Yeah. I believe I'm part of it. I'll look. I don't spend all the time there, but. Okay. I'd be I will happy take to a look. Send you would the you, link to would the you please? Thing. Thank you. I, I could go searching, but. Yep. So, so yeah, that's sad, and we wish, wish them the best in this challenging time. Um, and what else? Uh, mm. Were there any other correspondence you have? Just one. Um, we did have a resident from Pine Meadows condos reach out with concerns about some activity near their property and work. Um, she did, I should have forwarded it to you, but she did mention that she was directing this to the Conservation Commission. Um, she had concerns that there was heavy equipment near a river and in a wetland and perhaps filling. And then she had some other code um, enforcement questions. So Doug Eastman, the code enforcement officer, and I went out uh, Monday or Friday. And um, it, everything is, is fine there. It's a man-made drainage swale that they were removing brush from. There is no fill in the wetland that we saw. He did have some exposed um, soil near this um, drainage swale that we asked he consider putting up silt fence or silt sock or mulch or something to prevent you know erosion into the swale, but there was no no concern there. So I kind of I let her know that I let her know where we're at, and I didn't forward the email, but. In my mind, it was kind of tied up. I'm happy to forward it on after the fact. And I did have somebody reach out with interest in serving on the Conservation Commission. So um, I sent them the information to for the form and who to send it to, which is Pam. Um, so hopefully that she'll receive a form, an application, and it'll make its way to the select board and potentially on the board. You didn't reappoint the response, right? Oh, yes, it's April. I remember, I was off. Right, problem. It's a middle of April. God. I know. Which means that elections are next month. Um, you know, so, you know <laughs> rolls. Yeah, the chair doesn't. Don't you send out like an email out and ask everyone? Consider stepping up. Re-upping. Yeah. Re-upping. Re-upping. If anyone wants to take over, I'm in the middle. I'll make you a deal. <laughs> <laughs> you can't refuse. Re-ask, restructuring. <clears throat> um. Yeah, so if your, um, if your term is up, you likely would have received something from Pam. Yeah. I think it was you and Allison, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, I think it's a budget committee. I was thinking of the chair always sends out an email to everyone at the end of budget season and add if they want to stay on the, be on the slate. Yeah, that's I, I what I was Pam, thinking Pam of. Has done that for us. Um, she that. Well, that's because the slate has to be presented as a yes. blue recession. Yeah, but that's what I was thinking of the budget mm -hmm. committee and not all the yeah. others. I flipped a coin. <laughs> but you re right? You renewed, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just want to make that now. Let the record get it in a minute. Yeah. Let it be written. Let it be done. I have one, one question. Yeah. Um, I've noticed some, this should, should have been a trail sign, but I forgot about it, but um, yeah. some pink ribbons that say um, wetlands delimiter. Like, who puts those out there? Where have you noticed them? They're over by the parking lot for 3CIs where mm. I've seen them there, but like... So generally, wetland scientists put them in related to survey prep or something. Um, 
trying to think if I'm aware of any applications for that area. I can't think of anything. It's right right down the hill from the parking lot at 3CI. I don't know. Anytime I see new ribbons somewhere. Down the uh, hill. So going. Yeah, no, no. Condos are. Yeah. So still on Commerce Way? Yeah, it's off Commerce Way. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Okay, I think but there was something that just came up for a new business going in. I can't think. I'm sorry. I can get back okay. to you and look at my planning board bypass packets. It's not associated with Carlisle, that back property. No, it's on the other side of the side. Yeah. Away from that. Anyways, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, yeah, it would, it would only be used. It's wetland flags, wetland delineation flags. Flags is where you have flags. Yeah. So, which would only be? So, like West, they're all over West Side Drive right now too. So, if they're changing the hydrology of the system because of a project, you're going to want to go in and flag where the wetlands are first, and they usually do that by vegetation. So they'll just be like, okay, well, the wetland sort of delineates like this, mm -hmm. and they'll flag points along that so they can keep track of it. Or, you know, when we do site sidewalks, you'll, you'll notice with them. And so that's kind of the early prep work that goes into developing um, plans that you see in applications. Very first, very first stage. I know. A long probe. Yeah. <laughs> but someone would only do it for <clears throat> a, some type of project where there could possibly be impacts to those resources. I would say they're not doing it. Or something near the there's real work. Right. Well, I, I know there's one going in the back yeah. corner of that area. Okay. And they, there, there was some lot ones that they were trying to protect them for parking and things like that. So it's it yeah, probably, I just can't remember that. Way, or the other, a continental? What? It's out there, and it's like at the end. Well, it's it's like the, when you follow the road out, it's, 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 I didn't do a site walk, so I can't. No, but continental is the one where... On the other side. Commerce. 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 Well, it was skating rink. Anyways, okay. okay. Is that right? The skating rink's up there? Yeah, back behind the skating rink. I'm, I'm on the other side of the world, and I thought you were on... Continental. Yes. There's a big... Sh is there a shoe place? Oh, that already... That's already... That's, <coughs> that's not it, though. That's out front. Did yeah. yeah. you say Commerce oh. or Continental? It's between three... C yeah, that's three Commerce. Three CI and the that's Lantern. Commerce. The oh, the Atlantic okay. Lantern Factory. Anyways. Yeah, okay. I haven't okay. seen anything there. for them. Across the street. I'm on the wrong side of the road. Yep. 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 I haven't seen anything in anyway. that area. Yeah, I'm not aware of anything, but there could be. There could be. Well, it's only yeah. take a couple of years. And then when do, when do we get called in to like about some like the um, the new condo development that's up across from the mobile? Like they've already gateway gateway. Like that's super already been cleared. Super cleared. Mm -hmm. Do we not have, is there no wetland in impact? There was, and it did come, it did come to the town. That was, uh, 2017, I think? No, it was later than that. Yes. What? It was not during COVID. It wasn't during COVID. I think it was a year before. It doesn't matter. Uh, it was okay. 2019. <laughs> Maybe 2019. It was, yeah. 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 It was a whole year of the courts sooner than that. So before before my time, so okay. Yeah. 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 So, but we did, <laughs> we did <laughs> have, whatever that was. we did receive significant yeah. area that was protected where the more sensitive resources were in the back, um, in the back mm -hmm. of that property. So the 13 Connecting vernal the pools area. were protected through that process. I also, it, it's hard to see, it's, a, it's hard to see the change like that, but I just keep having to tell myself about the round pools that are protected. But um, yes, yeah, that did come to the Conservation Commission. Um, multiple times, actually. Yeah, I think it actually did go in through COVID. <laughs> it, it was 2019 and 2020. Yeah. Um, but we, we did talk about it. Now we have, we are talking about the deed and the trail, and there's going to be access back there eventually. But it, is, it was tough to see that. I know there's people in town too, and there's a lot of commotion about well, something like that. A lot of people thought it was commercial. That's what the whole area was zoned for. And that's why we did a. Uh, it's mixed, right? It's a mix. Well, yeah, it's mixed. That's why we did a uh, tip district. Right. Tip. 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 
Okay. Um, so, any other business? Okay. I, one other thing I just would mention, I think the, that state licensing regarding the wetlands scientists and yeah. surveyors, I believe that's getting pulled. Is that, is that yeah. everyone hear that? Yeah, that's what I've heard. Okay, good. But you know, things change. Things change. Pretty quickly. That's good news. But yeah, there were, I think there were a lot of people that were explaining that that's not a good idea. Yeah, that was confusing for everyone. Yeah, so, so it, and the bill switched houses now and so it went into it crossed the into the other house I can't remember if that was a Senate bill or a House bill but it went the in the governor's proposal and then I think one that was, the house and there removed was a house. it right yeah. so um, there was quite a bit of public outcry against it and HACC had something like 28 conservation commissions who signed up to with them to oppose it we sent information and in, I believe or did we do? I can't remember um, but yeah, the latest edit removes all of those licensure eliminations. That's the right way to say it. So it was proposing to eliminate the lic licensing. The current version eliminated that language. Yeah. Was it part of the budget? It wasn't yeah, a well yeah, it, was, it wasn't it was a standalone bill. It was bill. in two it was different a, places. Yeah. The budget thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, our next meeting is the ninth. Motion deadline the 28th of April. Otherwise, I motion to adjourn here. So moved. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, guys. Wait, 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 wait. Thank you for tuning in to Exeter TV. Exeter TV is the town's public and government access channels, available on Comcast channels 98 and 22. Channel 98 is your channel. If you have an idea for a program, want to host your own talk show, or submit a film, we're here to get your content on television. On channel 22, we bring you live and replay coverage of government meetings and other town updates. A third channel, Blue Hawk Media, is operated by SAU 16 and can be found on channel 13 with all your school sports, events, and meetings. You can watch Exeter TV online at exeternh.tv, Apple TV, and on Roku. Find us on social media for extra content. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell to get notified about live streams and new content. Tune in to our platforms every other Friday to watch the Exeter Bi-Weekly Report with recaps of recent events, updates from town departments, and messages from nonprofits in your area. If you head to our website, exeternh.tv, we invite you to sign up to our newsletter to receive monthly updates about new content, upcoming meetings, and more. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch Exeter TV and hope that you tune in to our other content as well.